Today I'm going to be ranking the top 100 songs of 2011. Of course, not exactly doing the ranking part, but listening to everything, and you get to see my process as I think through it. So, without further ado, here's part one, and uh, here we go. Hello everyone, my name is Bradley, I have a Brad Taste of Music, and today we are going to be doing the first of two streams of looking at the top 100 songs of 2011. Now, I did something last time where I did a separate video ranking everything all together. If you guys want to see that again, let me know. If not, then I will probably just uh, do what I did the first time around with these types of videos where I just at the very end... Uh, just rank the 50 that I heard, which I might do, uh, regardless. Anyways, you guys, um, I'm going to start by saying that I did 2010, and there are going to be some repeats here, since this is the billboard, and sometimes there will be overlaps, so I might, maybe my mind will change, though, on some of these, so, uh, I will give brief thoughts on songs I've already sort of covered in this series. With that being said, we got a lot of interesting names here. This is, uh, we got Mike Posner. I, I think he was on the last list, so I guess this is where his fame was kind of like, you know, he, a little bit of a continuation of that. There's Blake Shelton. I don't recognize a lot of this crap, but I do recognize a few things. There seems to be a lot of country here as well, which I expect to be pretty uh, dog shit. And uh, there's also Kanye West, All of the Lights. It's a pretty good song, not gonna lie. With that being said, I guess we're just gonna start. Uh, first song here, boom. Hands up in the air. I just want the my last, Big Sean and Chris Brown. I had no idea this was actually a charting single, but uh, back when I was getting uh, CDs from the library, I ended up getting this finally famous CD, and it had this song on it, and that's why I heard this track, and it was all right. I mean, it wasn't my favorite, but you know, it was okay. Hands up in the air. I just want the baddest bitch in the world right here on my lap. Oi also censored in this official version question mark they literally censor hit this ass up which makes me wonder if that is because uh chris brown literally this was in the midst of like the uh abuse scandal i'm i'm not sure uh -oh. like, like, I, like i never had it at seven, seven in the face put a ten in the ass I had an interesting dream, and I don't even know if I should say what this dream was. It was, it's kind of like a, a, a YouTuber's worst nightmare, which I think is why I had this dream. But I had a dream that I put out a video, and I said the N-word on it, like, just straight up. Like, I, I feel like this might be just like typical YouTuber dream, but what happened is it was like re-uploaded. But nobody actually paid attention or even noticed, because no, it was like at the end of the video. What do you mean dream? It wasn't a dream, yeah? Yeah, with an E-R. Literally with E-R. Like, hard R. Like, I just randomly, somewhere in a video, like, it was... <laughs> so, yeah, that was a pretty bad dream. I keep having, like, really weird YouTuber dreams. It's it's just adding to the catalog of that. Where was I on January 6th? My last, uh, my last is pretty low tier i mean it's it's just super mediocre we made it like big sean flex rap with a pretty awful chris brown hook now i have a little bit of nostalgia with this song um and i don't personally think it's like the worst thing ever but i i think that there are some glaring issues and honestly it's pretty it's pretty shit objectively it's a shrug but i i don't hate it Next song, Colder Weather by the Zach Brown Band. Uh, this is probably gonna be country and it's probably gonna suck. It's gonna rain. She's answered by the taillights shining through the window pane. But I'm stuck in colder weather. Now, I actually don't hate this. I think that this is super standard country dribble, like, uh, you know, 2011 formulaic shit, but I still think that it's very passionate. Um, mediocre, but, you know, it's still got some power behind it. It's not my thing, but I don't think it's particularly poorly done. It's a shrug. It's not bad. You win tequila by Kenny Chesney.
I actually think it's very standard. Like all this, I, I, I kind of like the themes of alcoholism and the fact that very serious subject matter is met with very pillowy um, sections of instrumentation. I mean, it is super easy to write this stuff off and go country boring, um, but actually trying to like be open-minded and listen to the story and whatnot, I actually feel like even these songs that are so polished and radio-friendly uh, still have some stuff that's uh, pretty okay. <laughs> You know, I actually kind of like it. I'm going to give it a uh, strong shrug. I actually might even like this more than the last one. Uh, yeah, it's, again, super standard, but really pretty and very sweet with a uh, serious subject matter and a decently serious way of handling it. Now, I think this might have been on the last list, Animals or Animal by Neon Trees. I don't remember. Here we go again. Here we go again. Ugh, I don't like it at all. In fact, you know, I feel like at least the country songs, while they were generic dribble, have aged better than this shit. This sounds awful. There's like borderline, like, uh, you know, Chris, oh, yeah. I'm like, Ugh. Ugh. God, man, there's just this whole aesthetic to this song that makes me go, Ugh. dog. I'll take, bro. <laughs> Are you gonna kiss me or not, Thompson Square? We were Fuck all you hoes! Detroit till I die, motherfucker! God damn it, not another fucking country song. Are you gonna kiss me or not? Oh my god. Oh, it's not on me. I hope you understand. I'm a white man coming to you from a cellulose. No, this is ridiculous. See, I feel like the other ones, the fact that they took it so seriously made me appreciate it a little bit more. This is supposed to be capturing that very free, loving feeling of, you know, that 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 kiss. Are you going to kiss me or not? You know, oh my God, that, that movie moment. This shit is so tacky and outdated. I don't have the same uh, love or patience for a absolutely awkward and awful song like this. Red headphones. Dog. She will. Lil Wayne and Drake. I, this is the Carter four, right? Carter four. Uh, I remember this song. I don't remember how I feel about this song. Oh yeah, this beat. <laughs> Young money. Young money. Young money. I tell her, now down pop that pussy for a real nigga. Karma is a bitch, but just make sure that bitch is beautiful. And today I went shopping and talk is still cheap. Oh. She won't, uh, but shit, then again, yeah, maybe she will. Yeah, she will. Stalin was ballin'. What the fuck? Welcome, Stalin. Yeah. Yeah. Brass off. I like my girl face south and her ass north. More boring than the last country song. I can definitely see people feeling that way. I personally like the really dark beat, and I like Drake's hook quite a bit on this. Uh, I also have a bit of nostalgia with this one, so I will be a little bit biased, uh, but I, uh, yeah. With that, I, I overall kind of enjoy it. She won't, uh, but then, she then again, maybe she will. Ladies and gentlemen, uh. she just started to pop and I squeeze, baby, you know. Are they really just doubled down on the hook at the end there? That's not great. I thought that something else was actually going to happen, but no. Anyways, um, yeah, I like it. It's a shrug. I, I think that still has some really awful bars in there. It definitely reeks of the era. It's aged horribly, but there is still a level of charm, a level of uh, darkness to the beat. Um, Not the worst thing in the world. It's okay. It's like, I think out of every song so far, this one, honestly, is probably my favorite. But I still really haven't had anything that I love. Oh, Blake Shelton. God gave me you. Oh, my God. DJ Khaled! DJ Khaled! We the best! We the best! We the best! Yeah, this is basically Hallmark card country music designed to send 
uh, to your lover over Facebook. I honestly despise this kind of music, and I feel like Blake Shelton was one of the uh, one of the strongest voices in this kind of generic bullshit. And to me, this is like the country equivalent of a Maroon Five song. I personally, I don't like this at all. It's a red headphones. Dog. Chris Brown next? No, actually, it's not. It's Price Tag by Jesse J and B.O.B. I also have a lot of um, nostalgia with this song. <laughs> oh, yeah, and then it starts off with this Coconut Man, Moonhead, and P. I don't know if that's, like, producer tag or whatever, but pretty pretty awkward when, when she does say it. Okay, Coconut Man, Moonhead. With the auto-tune, Coconut Man! What happened to B.O.B.? He killed his career with, uh, what was it, Scientology and Flat Earth bullshit? I mean, this is literally like, this is the equivalent of when Katy Perry came out with a song uh, criticizing, like, basically artists for being like or for creating zombies with making generic music jesse j here also like a very established writer in the industry she was one of the major writers on the song party in the usa actually i believe uh coming through and saying that everything is like you know all materialistic and shit and it's just like bro Happiness, yeah, that's my biggest issue with this. I, I honestly used to love this song as a kid. I think that this is aged terrifically. And I think that it sounds disauthent uh, inauthentic and dis disingenuous, or at least ignorant. Or at least playing ignorant. I personally think that this has honestly shrunk almost entirely on me. And we haven't even gotten to the B.O.B. feature. Keep the cars, leave me the garage. And all I, yes, all I need are keys and guitars and the sign of the feet. Uh-uh. So we gon' keep uh -uh. everyone uh -uh. the money. Yeah, this is aged horribly. Now this is this this ain't good, you guys. This ain't good. Sure thing by Miguel. Uh, Miguel's got a couple of bangers under his belt, I guess. I'm the Joker, baby. <laughs> Sometimes all I think about is you. Pet that, never go spurt that, and I got hurt. Now, I don't like this. This to me just runs as cut and dry, basic ass RB with, again, like this. This to me is like the RB equivalent of Blake Shelton's country equivalent to Adam Levine. I find this to be unbelievably disauthentic, uh, unauthentic, boring, Hallmark card r and I think that this is completely tacky, uh, tacky and uninteresting in every way. I'll give it a little stroke. Brad L, old head disagree. I'm surprised, like, you're telling me that this sounds good, dude? Like, the vocals are so horribly... It's so mid, it's so mid. Next song, please don't go. Mike Posner. Nine, I feel the sun creeping up like tick tock. Tick tock reference. Baby, please don't go. Wait, this is Mike Posner who made this song. It sounds. It sounds like a rejected um, Sean Kingston song. She looks like sex, 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 sex. Bro, this synth is horrible. Why is it so loud? So, yes, yeah, so song not doing it for me. Way too overbearing of a synth lead. And so Mike Posner, I think, is a really good songwriter. And that's like the one thing that saves this for me is he has a great ear for melody and a strong understanding of putting you know an emotional tie into songs even if it's not always like the most cliche shit in the world uh here he he kind of has his own spin but it's still pretty buried in cliches now that being said i think that this song overall is pain and is really awful in many many distinct ways i think that this is one of uh one of the worst age songs on the list so far it's a low shrug to a red headphones 
dog. Like this one just literally is like so horrifically assembled and loud. And again, I like Mike Posner. I really do. And I even, I enjoy this era to a degree. And I think that there are a lot of redeemable things, but I think it's ruined by disti like distinct ideas that just do not work. Oh, and more country. Oh, Rodney Atkins. Oh, my goodness. This beat is so hard. Bow, chicka, wow, wow. Hey! Uh, apple beers on a late night. Makes me want to take, makes me want to take a back road. And if I'm gonna hit a traffic jam, well, it better be a tractor, man. Wow, it's like there's nothing left to even add to this song, so now it's like, oh, oh, no, no, dude, no, no. Oh. It's the same formulaic awful garbage that was going on in the last song but this this honestly is worse finally yes finally chris brown dude finally some real music she ain't you you make it hard for me to see somebody else she touches me i'm wishing that they were your hands but you are you can't be serious with this shit, right? Wait, can I really sit in one of my if I could? Just trade her in, I would. Trade Nobody. her trade her in? Yeah, yeah, this is meant to be romantic with no regard whatsoever for for like his disposable partner. <laughs> this on either side of the spectrum, man, this this is this is awful. No, this it, not only is this not Chris Brown's worst song, this isn't even close to Chris Brown's worst era, as there are actual good songs on this album. Like, like, good songs. Like, actually. Coming from me. I think Chris Brown, this, this was probably where he peaked creatively. Oh my god, what, did he get the other bitch on this song now? The other ball and chain? Yeah, Chris Brown had a couple of hits throughout here throughout this era that i thought were actually kind of catchy and interesting and then everything else was like literally the worst shit i've ever heard and this this lands in that second category dog i uh i i don't think that there's anything worth continuing on with this so many girls in here. Where the girls at? I think I actually listened to this entire album recently. I actually listened to this D David Guetta album. Not against my will either. I went out of my way to listen to it. So many girls in here. Where do I begin? I'm here with my friends. Bro, my ears. Shout out to his family. Oh, no, no, I didn't listen to this album. I listened to his previous one, actually. Which, by the way, I ain't even gonna lie. I ain't even gonna lie. Also, this... You know, since we're on the topic of David Guetta, here we go again. It beat out Watch the World Burn is the worst song of the year so far. And it's not even close. I actually think that this song will probably be my least favorite song of the year. I think I've had enough of Oliver Tree lowering the bar with every single release. And and this, when someone sent it in yesterday, I thought was a joke. I, I genuinely thought that this wasn't real. And my surprise when I figured out it was real, because I was like, there's no way that he would make a song this absolutely unlistenable and horrible, right? No, no, he did. Yeah, I saw the artwork. I was like, this looks like a... Shout out to his family! No, no. So yeah, uh, it's pretty dog water. As awful as that Nikki verse is, it is actually uh, the only engaging thing about this song. So uh, I actually am very grateful for it. That song was dog shit. That was terrible. Dog. Um, one of the worst David Guetta songs I've heard. 
literally it's it's actually horrible. Like I've given this guy the benefit of the doubt before, but um but I, I can't defend that. That is like it takes everything that's bad about a flow ride a club song and then like somehow makes it worse. Jason, Future history? Is that really bro, look at this shit, dude. Wait, this beat Jason, sounds familiar. Jason! I've been waiting much too long, much too long. Jason the Rulo. Show me love. Uh, Jason Derulo, of course, once again, taking popular samples of songs and ruining them. You know, I didn't even realize how good the Imogen Heap song was, uh, that the, ooh, what you say, until I actually listened to it, and I was like, wait a second, the only reason I liked the Jason Derulo song at all was that sample, and the original song is literally so much better that it makes the Jason Derulo song sound like cheap garbage in comparison, and this is the exact same situation. Dog shit. How many, how many awful samples are here, dude? Oh my god, is there... Holy shit, that is the worst song of the day so far. It ain't even close. That is, that is the worst shit ever. There's nothing good about that. Oh, wow, that's bad. Wow, that's really, really, really bad. Oh my god. Goes around, comes back around, hey, my Best thing I never had, Beyonce. Make it my way downtown, walking fast, people passing them all down. Yeah, this is one of the most mediocre Beyonce songs I've ever heard, and I have no interest in continuing this. It's a low shrug to a red headphones. The only thing saving it is I feel like the chorus has some, uh, woman power to it, but everything else about this is absolutely horrible. Like, it is so derivative, it is so, like, uninspiring of the era. I think it's aged horrifically. Like, I, I think that Beyonce's done so much better than this. Moving forward, it just sounds like generic dribble. Drake headlines. I might be too strong out on compliments. Overdosed on confidence. I leave DJ it at. Kelly. I know I exaggerated things. Now I got it like that. Better do what you supposed to do. I'm like, why gotta be all that? They know, they know. Headlines is just straight up one of Drake's best songs he's ever laid down. I think that it has some of his tightest verses, a very catchy chorus, and a great beat that works very well for him in this style. I actually don't have many complaints about this track, and I think that considering the list so far has been so unbelievably bad, this one still stands out as one that's aged pretty well. It's a smiley ball. Boys. Don't say your word, just turn around and Vexy, oh, not the new boys. Oh, God, these guys are terrible. Oh, God. Oh, my God, this is so awful. Think about homicide. Damn, you fucks in with the man, girl. Don't say your word, just turn them. You fucks in with the man, girl. Backseat is an electro pop torture chamber. It's a red headphones. Dog. My hair. Think about it when you touch me. In the dark by Dev. On my waist, through my hair. Oh. Bro, this shit used to be on the radio all the time while I was uh, Roblox trading uh, in the night. If it's wrong, to let my hands do what they want. Jesus Christ. Back when Saxo Beat was a thing. Me, open my body up and do some surgery. Jesus Christ, dude. This is like some... Bro, like, 
this is somehow raunchier than a lot of the shit that is like just straight up talking about sexual acts nowadays because it's so suggestive that it really makes you think about everything being said. This is actually somehow like the one of the dirtiest things I've heard like in in this era period. Oh Christ. All right, I made the uh, decision that this song is absolutely awful if you're not on four shots of Tito's. In which case, this song, and if you're in a club, it's probably all right. All right. <laughs> uh, Brad Paisley with Remind Me with Carrie Underwood. To the man who waited on me. Fuck off! And care if people stared. We make it out and we make out in the crowd somewhere. Somebody tell us to get a room. It's hard to believe that was me and you. Now we keep saying that we're okay, but I don't wanna settle for good night great. I miss the way that it felt back then. I wanna feel that way again. Been so long, bet you forgot. The way I used to kiss your neck Remind me Remind me Suck my balls and grab my ass And I want you to castrate me Remind me I'm just a wild man Anyways, I did that for copyright in case you're wondering yeah, poor, me off. We were kissing goodbye and we couldn't stop I feel bad cause you missed your flight. Listen, if I was heading to the airport and I won't even I won't even say, you know, I'll just say my partner decided that they were going to hold me up and I missed my flight, I'm just saying, I'd kill her. Well hey, well, hey, that's metaphorically speaking. Okay, listen. Alright, that's not listen, okay, hey, 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 listen, okay, you gotta listen. That was a figure of speech. That in game, exactly. In a video game. I'm sorry, Kuma. Did you know that you have rights? Thank you, Saul. Constitution says you do. Saul got me out with the classic uh he believed his life was a video game uh defense. These two have no chemistry. You're right. They really don't. It's just two very popular names, and this is extremely awkward. The red headphones. Now, I, I, oh, I honestly think that Brad Paisley is a, a, is one of the artists that's allowed to get away with a little bit of cheese, as he brings a lot of charm to what he does. This is not one of those cases, in my opinion. This is too much. This is just too much cheese. Hey, girl. Oh, Luke Bryan. Country girl, shake it for me. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm doing this because I want to play a long stretch of this, and I swear to God, you wouldn't believe how bad this is. Boom in my big truck, gonna open up the doors and turn it up. Gonna stomp my boots in the Georgia mud. Gonna watch you make me fall in love. Get up on the hood on my daddy's tractor. Open up the toolbox, it doesn't matter. Down on the tailgate, girl, I can't wait to watch you do your thing. For the young boss sitting in the honky truck. For the rednecks rocking to the break of dawn. The DJ spinning that country song. Come on, come on, come on. Shake it for the birds, shake it for the bees, shake it for the catfish down in the street the creek. Oh my god. I can't. Dude. Girl, shake it for me, girl. Shake it for me. Somebody sweet little farmer child. I have nothing to say. I think we found the worst song on the playlist. I I, I can't see it getting any worse than that. Oh, 
God. Next song, Knee Deep, featuring Jimmy Buffett? Wait, Jimmy Buffett's the one who did It's 5 O'Clock Somewhere? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Had sweet love, but I lost it. Me deep in the water somewhere. Got the blue sky breeze blowing wind through my hair. Come on, Brad, you the thug shaker? No. Yeah, anyways, I actually like this song. I give it a strong shrug. It's actually very pleasant. Seems like the Zach Brown band uh, does an okay job at just making these very. Uh... Wait, these are the same guys who did this? Chicken fry. Cold beer on a Friday night. A pair of jeans that fit just right. I found both. I, bro, they're on this same song. The guy who did Five O'Clock Somewhere, Five O'Clock Somewhere, and the guy who did Chicken Fried on a song together. Wait, that's actually insane. Wait, this is historic. It's a ten. It's it's got to be a ten. I'm feeling. Only in America. Only in America would this ever happen. Barefoot Blue Jean Night. Uh. Hey Brad, uh, hey, this is a bad era of country, but can ch uh, chat stop crapping itself when country is mentioned or let, uh, before the song starts, by the way, Zach Brown Band is good. I actually agree with that. I think that the country songs, there have been some pretty decent ones in the mix, uh, but I can understand people also being super impatient with country and not wanting to give it a shot. At the end of the day, you just kind of, you know, you got to understand that chat's just a bunch of impatient ADHD vultures. So, you know, it is what it is. Full of we No. Not the worst country song, but no. no. Dog. Selena Gomez in the scene. This is back when she was still industry plant, right? Of course. Who says? Yeah, as suspected. So the way that these songs work is they usually just have like a shelf of songs for a singer to select, uh, to sing and do their thing over. Um, and Selena Gomez just happened to pick who says she has zero writing credits on this. She has nothing to do with this song besides, of course, just singing along and pretending like she has some sort of connection to it. This is the kind of shit that I hate in music. Like, I truly hate this. It is only just set up to make money, and I truly just despise this shit. No world in which this sort of disingenuous, unauthentic garbage is going to ever strike a chord with me. Cheers! Drink to that. Song brought to you by Ray Bans and Jameson. There is actually probably some uh, proof to that. As this song, it literally is like so. This is the exact same case as the last one. The difference, the only difference being, is that Rihanna is a more established performer who actually has the ability to bring charisma and their own personality to a song because they've actually been doing it long enough to, to understand how to play the game better. I don't like the song. I think that it's absolutely annoying. In fact, I'd say that this is a, a slight improvement, but just as soulless, an annoying, and again, sponsored by as you could possibly get. This is a red headphones. Unnatural Dog. still and really not it. Like super low grade drinking song. Bro, this another literally pull off the shelf, dime a dozen shitty song, but this time this has like three times the amount of writers on it. Filled with a soundboard of lazy reggae pop cadence meant for the semi-alcoholics, it opens up a world of Rihanna as she brushes off the haters and indulges in the weekend. The act, bro. You know what I mean? You can't make this shit up. Eli Young Band, Crazy Girl. 
Brad has ADHD, but I understand your frustration and sentiment as an autistic slash schizophrenic person. It's hard to tell when people are joking or serious here. Oh, yeah. No, that's the thing. At, at some point, tone indicators might be helpful. But I'll tell you right now, as someone who's, first of all, extremely sarcastic all the time, I'm someone who, like, 99% of what I sh say should be looked at with just a bit of skepticism. Because half the time I speak... I feel like I'm just trying to provoke a reaction. Sometimes I will literally just say something straightforward to just straight up throw people off and try. And maybe it's lazy on my part to just throw that all on the uh, on the listener and the consumer of my my words to to figure it out. But I feel like um, it makes me happy. So We're gonna do what lovers do. yeah, exactly. I said I never heard "Smells Like Teen Spirit" with like the most straight. Yeah, I see. Eli Young Band, huh? I am doing some research real quick. <laughs> no way. Oh, wow. Yeah, just as I suspected. Guess what? Guess what? You'll never believe this. This song by the Eli Young Band? Not a single person in the band worked on writing this song. Not a single person. Ain't no way, bro. Look it up yourself, dude. It's cut and dry, dude. God, man, that's terrible. Anyways. Yeah, as you can tell, I hated that. Next song, uh, Teenage Dream by Katy Perry. Pretty sure I covered this on the last one. No way tonight, no regrets. I like this song. The heart of pop lives in this song. Back when Katy Perry was good. Yeah, this is back when Katy Perry was embracing the uh, the, the love for this sort of really glitzy pop. Next song, Back to December. Detroit till I die, motherfucker. Talking all that bullshit. So Thank you, Soren. You made time to see me. So this is me swallowing. Yeah, well, that's the thing, is, like, this... So, Taylor, great artist of the era. Um, she is one of the, like, more authentic pop acts of the time, where, like, what she says really feels like how she feels. And you can feel that in her music, and it's one of the things that made people, I, I guess, fall in love with her so much. I just don't really care for it that much, because it's not for me. But it's good. So, strong shrug. Oh, finally, guys, we got back to, we're getting back to the real music. We got Without You by Usher. Without, without, yeah. Shout out to his family. I can't win, I can't rain. Without you, without you. Without you. Damn, that shit got me on some Wreck-It Ralph nostalgia. One of the better David Guetta songs of this time, much better production than the other one we heard. Uh, this is actually some of the best production Usher has been on in this era too, because I feel like he constantly is over absolutely awful beats. Um, this is actually quite an interesting combination because I am so sick of this song. I've heard it so many times, but I think that it does okay. It's a shrug. Not terrible. The bottles in the ice. Next is Like a G6. I've already heard this song a lot. I actually like this one. I like how it's produced. I think it's a uh, quintessential club banger. So I really like the synth lead here. Everything about this is very simple, but it feels drunk and like it's falling out of the song, which I think is perfect for this kind of song. And I think it goes hard as shit. Uh, yeah, it sounds, uh, it, it goes stupid. I think it's a smiley ball. One of the better club songs of this era. You and I, Lady Gaga. I don't know if I've heard this one. Been a long time since I came around. He says, sit back down where you belong. Like cool Nebraska guy. 
I think this is actually one of uh, Lady Gaga's worst aging songs. I, I again, I appreciate that Lady Gaga is like super authentic with her music and whatnot, but I think that this is uh, just not. I I just don't enjoy it. I think it's really bombastic and annoying, and uh, also boring at the same time. It's a low shrug. <laughs> Pretty Girl Rock? Oh my god. That dairy airline is absolutely horrendous. That is so... It, I, I feel like I... First of all, it's like looking at my dairy air. Like, bro. Wait a second, this sounds familiar. I might have, this might have been one of those, I don't know. Pretty, uh, pretty sticky hook, but everything else is absolutely horrendous about this song. It's a red headphones. Dog. Oh, it ain't even, no, yeah, the lyrics are so horrible. Penis colada much? Yeah? With the dairy airline? Bro, she didn't even write. Bro, she wasn't even involved in the writing of this song. Wow. But Neo was. Neo was involved in this. Ralph McDonald. Bill Withers. That's got to be a mistake. That's got to. Bro, what? <laughs> I, I don't know why Bill Withers is here, but maybe it's because something was sampled of his. Uh. <laughs> Oh god, we found love this song. I think Rihanna was a poor choice on this one for for the lead artist. I think their singing just does not match this at all. She doesn't really bring a style and grace. Even though it's supposed to be like a, a kind of raunchy song, I don't, I don't really know. It's, I, I, I just, I don't really like it. I've never really liked this song, but I gotta say that drop kind of ass as well. I, I don't think it's bad as some of these other ones, but I'm just not really feeling it. I think it does have a bit more magic um, than some of these other tracks, but I just don't love it at all. Jason Aldean, oh, oh god, we got more country. Jason Derulo! What do you mean this is not country? Oh! For a minute there, I lost myself. No. No, I'm done. No. It's too boring for words, dude. This is the most predictable, boring-ass, boardroom-written collaboration you could possibly get, and it's made to sell units, and I don't care. Next! <laughs> Honey Bee, Blake Shelton, good God. Blake! 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 Oh yeah, no, just like I expected. See, this is what I mean when I say he's like the Adam Levine of this bullshit, dude. Just like all these other fake-ass, horrible-ass country artists, this motherfucker doesn't even write this shit. He pulls it off of a shelf, and he just does the vocals, and he ships it out with his fucking face on it. It's it's the same shit, man. But these feelings piling up won't give me no rest. Sweet. Unironically, Blake and Adam were on a show together. Yeah, and they had incredible chemistry. They were best friends on that show. They they were like uh, fr they were like you know had a friendly rivalry and whatnot. There's a there's a reason they got along so well. They know the industry very well. Mr. White's gay for you. Be my honeysuckle. Wait, hold on a second. I'll be your honeybee. You be my hun- Bro, what? Oh. Sorry, sorry, but I gotta stick your <sighs> She's all laid up in bed with a broken heart. For the first time, by the script. She's all laid up in bed with a broken heart. 
are. Wait, these are the guys that made Hall of Fame, and also Hall of Fame had Will I Am on it. You work, man. These times are hard. For the first time in forever. I just find this to be super uninteresting and still very formulaic. I, I, I don't find any value in this. I thought at least Break Even had some like um, strong emotional undertones that like translated through really well. This to me just kind of comes off as horribly dated 2011 rock uh, that is made, again, for Hallmark cards. Low shrug to a red headphones. Dog DJ God is falling in love. This is on the last video. We'll just brief, uh, briefly go over it. So we're back in the mine. I feel like even though Usher has nothing to do with actually the uh, lyrics of this one, he has such a good way of blending into it and feeling it. And he has such a powerful voice that he actually manages to transcend it to where you wouldn't be able to tell. That's what I look for. If you're going to uh, take a song off a shelf, embrace it. You know what I mean? Feel it. Sell me on it. You know, make this shit feel like your own. I feel like Usher does that on here. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, and, and you can already tell Pitbull uh, wrote his own verse as well. You know, Evo, my life is a movie and you just TiVo. <laughs> Mommy got me switching like a dreadlock. It's just me and you, darling. Look at me, look at you. Yeah. yeah. Pain is in the <laughs> Bottoms up, I actually enjoy this song quite a bit. I think this is a great drinking club song that I have a lot of nostalgia for. Can't believe Caesar Milan uh, was able to teach Pitbull to rap. <laughs> Shut up. It's Mr. Still, your girl. Okay, let's get it now. I'm with a bad bitch, he's with his friends. I don't say hi, I say keys to the bins. All, All around, around the world. Do you hear me? Now, I actually uh, love Nikki's verse here. I think that she makes the song her own with just an unbelievable amount of character and charisma. I feel like Trey Songz does a good job of setting the vibe and setting her up. I don't love much of anything Trey Songz does, but I feel like this is just a really strong combination. And yeah, one of my favorites of this era. Smiley ball for me. Oh, written in the stars. Written in the stars featuring Eric Turner. What the fuck is this? Oh Christ, what is this, a Muse song? Bro, you're not Kid Cudi, dude. You're not Kid Cudi. You're not B.O.B. sign? Yeah! Yeah, we, we literally have B.O.B. at home. This is tacky, this is aged horribly. Um, I feel like at least like Kanye's bling era, you know, he was doing something like tastefully unique and interesting and uh, cinematic. So I listen back to something like Graduation and I still feel like there's uh, sure a couple of moments that have aged poorly, but a ton of moments that have aged well. I listen to some shit like this. I'm like, wow, what the hell is this comic book garbage that is like a mix of electro pop and hip hop that sounds like this awful mix with like bling air and god damn this sounds like dog shit man no dog i made it i made it what the hell by avril lavigne Look, I, I don't really, so I get Avril Lavigne, but it's just, it's not for me. It's just really trashy, and it just doesn't do anything for me. It's a shrug. Like a low shrug for me. More, Red One Jimmy Joker remix? Oh, get on the floor, bring out the fire. Wrong version? This is the version they put on the playlist. Bro, this is the only version there is, motherfuckers. Synths are uh, kind of annoying on this song, but I think overall, if you're kind of looking just for a fun club banger, this is an okay one. It's a shrug. This is on Todd's best list, I'm surprised. Really? Uh, hold it against me, Britney Spears. Gotta be off key, right? 
Ugh. This to me is just typical Dr. Luke trash. Low shrug to a red headphones. Dog One of the lower tier songs that he just sort of shed out with a really annoying electro, uh, electro pop beat. I didn't like that at all. But there's a drop. Oh Christ. Oh fuck no, dude. Hey guys, look. It's a 10 out of 10 song. I wish Kanye didn't like that one, uh... I wish Kanye didn't like that one Austrian painter. Something wrong. I hold my head. I slapped my girl. She called the feds. My brother, brother, grandmother hit me in that order. Oh yeah, look at that. This shit did age pretty well. Anyways, I love this album. I love this song. I think it's great. I think it tells an amazing story. It even continues to get even better past this point, even more grand. I actually kind of like how everything is so overblown on this song. Even if it clips a little bit, I feel like it's just so overwhelming and still the composition on this is unbelievable. I think that this is S tier and I'm actually surprised that this is even here in the first place. It's a strong smiley ball and easily the best song clearing everything else on this entire list is nothing else even comes close to this level of ambition and execution. Also, he made graduation. Alright, next song, uh, Rocketeer. This is another Far East Movement song. Uh, this one's higher up. Here we go. Oh yeah, this. This is horrible. Oh my god. Oh. Oh my god. I'm. Dude, I gotta show you this writer's list, dude. Philip Lawrence, Ray, uh, Rom Romulus, Jeremy Reeves, Bruno Mars, Jonathan Yip, DJ Vermin, Kev Nish, James Raw, Jay Chong, and Ray, uh, Ryan Tedder. Honestly, this sounds like a song Bruno Mars would make, so I, I actually, yeah, yeah, it does sound like Bruno Mars. Yeah, and this song is terrible. It's a red headphones. I think it's actually, Dog. like, so shit sounding. Like, I think it's aged horribly. Speaking of aged horribly. When I walk on by, girls be looking like Debbie Fly. Girl, look at that body. Show it, show it, it's show Domino. It, show it. I'm sexy and I know it. I'm at the beach. I'm in a speedo trying to tan my cheeks. Like, Ow. This is how I rock. Girl, look at that body. Girl, look at that body. Girl, look at that body. Work out. I'm going to say something. A lot of you are going to disagree, but I have a feeling that a lot of you are going to agree. After the very horrible day of music listening, this is one of the more enjoyable tracks. It has a sense of humor. I think the beat's pretty fun. Uh, and I think it's actually aged better than the majority of the songs here. Actually. I think it's actually aged better than like 90% of the music on this list somehow. It's like the, it's like the ironic qualities of it have just all of a sudden become like what people try to do. And it's and it's for, it almost feels accidental because this was like basically a borderline novelty act, right? I actually I actually kind of like this. I, I give it a light smiley ball. Look, it's it's one of those songs that I wouldn't be caught dead ever listening to in public, but it actually kind of slaps. And, and and I gotta say, it it is not as bad as like back in the day when we were all like j our jaws dropped to this. This shit, it is. It's dumb fun. Was not expecting to actually fuck with that. Here's one of the most mediocre songs most of you guys might not even remember. This song's called "Roll Up" by Wiz Khalifa. Man, fuck that shit. You know one thing straight, I'll be there, girl, whenever you call me. 
in this chain. Whenever you need me, nah. whenever you want me, you know you can yeah. call me. Yeah, it is a role. It's a weed reference, yeah. Try to stay out your business. So what probably happened here is Wiz Khalifa wrote the verses and this other guy named Stargate who's worked on a ton of uh, other artists writing for them or whatever most likely is involved with writing this absolutely horrendous weed reference chorus. Uh, and that seems to be this entire track in a nutshell. Tacky is a motherfucker. I don't really like it. It's a low shrug to a red headphones. Dog no, I can't take one more step to Oh Christ, jar of hearts, huh? No. Rolling around leaving scars Collecting your jar of hearts Yeah, no. No. I think this is tacky as all hell. Way too f***ing slow. And also, uh, with just a mix of boardroom in it to make it just absolutely unengaging to the max. Red headphones. Dog to a shrug. Stereo Love. This sounds familiar by the name, but I just don't, I can't remember it off the top of my head. Oh! This is the, so yo, okay, so talking about song ripoffs, I don't remember which one came first, but this song literally sounds exactly, or at least very similar to, um, uh, the Jennifer Lopez on the floor song. Anyway. See what I'm saying? Dale. Why do you have to be named Dale? Feels like it has some uh, spirit and heart for the love of the, I'd say, atmospheric, uh, electronic side of things. Like, like there's a bit more of an artistic integrity to this one. It's a light smiley ball. I, I like it. I like the way that it kind of builds up, feeling like it's, uh, it's, it's taking you through a journey before it gets to that drop. I, uh, I, I honestly like it. There's actually quite a lot uh, here creatively, so I, I don't mind it at all. Yeah. Next song is called Motivation by Kelly Rowland with Lil Wayne? <laughs> Young Mula. Oh my god. Oh my god. So this is motivation to like, to get him to like, go 20 rounds on her? Jesus Christ. Awooga, boy, going <laughs> on. Oh God! I put her on my plate, then I do the dishes. What? Keep going, going like I'm racing. When I'm done, she hold me like a conversation. We the baby. That was horrible. That was such a bad feature. Uh, I think this song's a little too spicy for me. It's a low shrug to our red headphones. Dog. I just can't handle it. And if you ask me to stand up, all of a sudden, uh, I can't feel my legs, and they have no functionality, so there will be no standing up until the stream ends. Because all my blood uh, from my legs has gone somewhere else. Okay. Ain't no cameras. <laughs> I mean, I broke my bones. That's what I said. Just a dream, we already heard this one in the last one, so we'll just brief it over. DJ Khaled, we the best! Exactly, the mob took my legs. Oh, uh, oh, uh, I'm thinking about... Anyways, this song's good for about 30 seconds, and then it becomes really boring. It's a shrug. Final song of the day. I'm actually quite excited for this one. I've been listening to this one quite a bit. Now, this song is kind of awful but i also like it i actually like it a decent amount now i warn you there's the f slur in this song it's pretty bad all right here we go isn't 
from the platform, they just say it's whack. But they don't know what dope is. And I don't know if I was awake or asleep when I wrote this. All I know is, you came to me when I was at my lowest. You picked me up, bring new life into me. I blew my life to you, but all the life of me. I don't see why you don't see like I do. But it dawned on me, you walk a son. Flam is fighting you with stock. Let me turn on the light to write in me and enlighten you. I don't think you realize what you mean to me. Not the slightest clue. But you and me were like a crew. I was like a psychic. You go either one. To fight when I get off this fucking mic and you go hug me, but it's not an option, there's nothing else I can do. When I see you struggle, you come to me with a tears. My name is Skylar Gray, yo. Now, I personally would probably give the song like a six, but for some reason, I keep listening to it, even though I kind of think it's tacky and awful and really like dull and also aged poorly. I kind of have a soft spot for it. Um, yeah, I kind of like it. My hus- my husband is Walter Gray, yo. No, it literally sounds like Eminem is forcing out his shit throughout this song. I also like this beat quite a bit. What's this song about? I can tell you exactly what it's about. Dr. Dre is- So this is like the only song Dr. Dre, uh, released in forever. And I didn't even know this was a Dr. Dre song. I was like, oh, it's an Eminem song. No, it's a Dr. Dre song. The entire song is about Dr. Dre and uh, him being unable to get creative and put out an album or whatever. And so the whole thing is being compared to doc uh, needing a doctor. Like, the audience needs a doctor, but then Dr. Dre, he's dead, and he needs a doctor. And so the doctor brings him back to life, and Dr. Dre says, I'm back! And then he says the F slur, and then you're just like, you know, maybe you should... Uh, you know, maybe rest a little bit longer, you know? <laughs> and Dr. Dre said it was supposed to be on detox. It literally feels like a lifetime ago, but I still remember the shit like it was just yesterday, though. You walked in, yellow jumpsuit, crack jokes, once you got inside the boot, told you. Like smoke, some remember if I put on, but they just left. They said they was fighting for the death, but where the fuck are they now? Now that I need them, I don't see none of them. All I see is slim. Fuck all you want, they're the friends. All I need is him. Fucking backstabbers when the chips were down, you just laughed at us. About to feel the fucking rap out after math. We gon' see us in a lab jackets and that's where the fuck we been. You can kiss my indecisive ass crack. You just said the word out loud? Yeah, so. Despite all that, I actually like this song. It's a smile ball. I'm using my one guilty pleasure pass on this one, because even though it's tacky and awful and Eminem sounds like he's literally trying to lay a shit, I, I, I like the song, you know? I personally like the song, so. Literally 19... Shut up, Stalin. That's going to be it for this video. I'm actually going to probably... Yeah, I'll let you guys decide whether or not you want me to do a separate video where I can have slides and just do sort of a list format to, to decide, you know, the top 100 or top 50 or whatever uh, songs or... Yeah, we'll figure it out. But either way, that's all I got for you right now with this video. Uh, if you want me to just do a list either, at, like, also just a quick list at the end of the next video, I'll do that. Um, but yeah, that's that's it. Peace.